Peanuts, guys, it's peanuts. The summer transfer budget for Manchester United has been revealed. The first transfer window under Sir Jim Ratcliffe is not going to be as exciting as you might have anticipated, at least if we consider what we have heard. Now, it has been uh, highly anticipated. Honestly, I'm one of those who did not have a lot of expectations in this summer transfer window, and I'm going to tell you why in a bit. But I remind you, please like this video. It's so important. Subscribe to the channel. Most of you enjoy these videos, but don't subscribe, guys. You join the community. Don't you want us to grow? Don't you want us to grow into something you would enjoy? Please do like and subscribe. That will be so important for me. It's a request. Now, let's move on. Well, the summer transfer window is just around the corner. And like we knew, we knew remember when we were all calling for the Glazers out, we were hoping that we'll bring in an owner who was going to bring in a lot of cash. But you forget so quick, guys. Some of you forget so quick that even if you've got the richest owner of, in the world, the richest man in the world owning your club, because of the financial pay play rules, they can only do so much because they cannot inject their cash into the club. Uh, it's not like before with the Abramoviches getting their you know, money from uh, the oil, their oil, oil, oil reserves to come and, and, and inject into their clubs, or this man cities uh, sheikhs to come and bring their oil, 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 uh, pounds and dollars and what have you to inject into their clubs at the, uh, to, to, to just knock out the broke arsenals. How on earth are they going to compete? The competition was unfair. So that's why financial fair play brought fairness across the, uh, the, the league, across football, but it is now biting Manchester United. A hundred million pounds, according to ESPN, a report that they, they, uh, they, they shared, is, is what United will have to spend in the summer. Now, we are going to discuss how on earth are we going to spend this money? I mean, if you're poor, you spend according to your uh, to your wallet. Don't overstretch yourself. Now, I know we've been linked with so many players, and I know we've got so many departments we need to improve. We've got to uh, find a centre back. We now need a left back. We need a holding midfielder. We need uh, they say we need a winger. We need a backup striker for for Hoyland. Those are like five players. Some still thought we need a right back because Free Pong was on the list. Guys, so many departments need to be improved. Then we need to let go of so many players. Anyway, we also need a replacement for Marcus Rashford. That's another winger. Guys, we need so many players, but how many can we get with a hundred million pounds? Now, here's the thing. First of all, we've got the able people in place, the likes of Jason Wilcox, Omar Berada, who will be starting work mid-July. That will still be in, the, in time uh, of, of, of the of, of the summer. So. Uh, they, they will know, they'll figure out what to do. Before it was you know, a bunch of guys who didn't have a clue about what to do, who are running things and they are wasting money that wasn't there. Already we we're on a huge debt, but they are wasting the little that we had. So uh, it's um, not worrying that much. I think for me, it's an opportunity for us to, to work smart, not to rush into signing players to crazy contracts, get signing players for 86 million pounds to come and play, you know, uh, negative passes all day. So I think for me, it's a good challenge now for Sajim Ratcliffe to show what they can do and uh, with, with little resources. Now, remember, 100 million is not cast in stone because we can sell players and add on to it. But the bare minimum, you remember how we had the bare minimum we had in the last summer transfer, it was 125 million. But we were hoping we would sell players to add on it, but there was no player you could sell. There was literally no player you could sell. So same thing here. We have a bare, it's even less. We have about 100 million pounds unless we sell some players to top on that. Now, you can be honest with yourself and look within what we have and you say, which players are we going to sell? We thought Marcus Rashford could command some money, but who would pay a, a reasonable fee for Marcus Rashford in the case we are see, seeing him in now, in the situation he's in now? So it's probably only fair for us to first plan with the little we have. But I know we shall sell some players, but let us just plan with that little. Because even if we have a, a, a starting amount of 100 million in this day and age, with the players we could sell, the Casemiro's and the likes, we may only get another 100 million at most, really. At most, that's what I think. What will 200 million with all the, play, the departments I spoke about that we need to improve? What can 200 million do in this day and age where players like, like Declan Rice go, go for 125 million, where Moises Kaiseido goes for 110 million? And these are the departments we need to boost. We, you understand what I mean? So it's a tight, it's going to be still a game of chess. We need to play smart, not play out of excitement. So this is a good test for Sajim. But uh, here's what I think for me. I think 
yes, whereas we've got to improve all these departments, I think we've got to then to, re to rank the departments, to say, what is the first uh, area we need to improve? Replacement for Casemiro. That's the first area. Holding midfielder, number six. That's the first area United needs to sort. With how, now, that area, that's an expensive area. That's uh, an area where you need uh, about 80, 100 million to, to get a player for because you, you know the players will be linked with the likes of Onana, who is priced at about 80 to 90 million by, by uh, Everton, who bought him meanwhile for 34 million quid. Maybe if we bargain, we can get him for a 60, but uh, they seem to have him, uh, you know, put a buyout clause in his contract. That's quite scary. Now, uh, the other player is Joao Neves. He's priced at 120 million euros. So you see that these holding midfielders are expensive already. That's beyond even the budget we have. But we need to find a holding midfielder. So let's put, let's say we shall get a world-class holding midfielder for about, let's say, if we search around smartly, if we are patient, if we are lucky and, you know, dig properly. And because Sergio Mrakriff says he wants to find guys who are unknown and make them stars. So let's say we, we are going to find an unknown player. Let's say we can get one for, a good one for, let's say, 50 million quid. Yeah, let's say we can look beyond on Joao Neves and get an unknown but good player for 50 million or 60 million. So let's say 50 million. Then we have we are left with 50 million. What other department then do we look at to, to, to sort? We have got, we need a center back. There is Todibo and the likes, Bremer, that, that who have been, we've been linked with. I don't think the center back for me would be the second priority. After holding midfielder with the injuries to Luke Shaw, the con consistent injury is Luke Shaw and, and uh, Tyrell Malaysia. I think the next important department is a left back, a natural left back. We need to get a natural left back. And I think we can get a good left back for about, for about 30 million tops. 30 million, 25, 30 million pounds tops. Yeah, I think we can get a good, decent left back, even less. So let's say 30. So that's 80 on a holding midfielder and a left back. That's a new need. Before, in the last summer, it wasn't an important need. But the fact that these two natural left backs we have have got injuries and you don't think they will recover completely, I think it's, 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 it's important we sort it uh, once and for all. So uh, get a left back. Then number three priority is a backup striker for me, a backup striker for Rasmus Hoyland. Because when there is no Hoyland, we have no striker. And we can't expect Hoyland to play alone, score goals alone. So, who is the backup striker for Hoyland? Sahu Girasi, 15 million. That's 15 plus 80, 95 million quid. Yeah? We're left with five. Then five, maybe if we have sold someone, if we have sold someone, you know, uh, for about 25 or 30 million, we can then go for a center back. Because we can get a good, decent center back for no more than 40 million. Because even Todibo is priced at about 40 to 45, but if you negotiate, we can settle for 30. So you can see that we can sort most of our key areas that we need to sort. But the most important thing for me is not really to rely on, you know, bring in so many expensive players. I think it is okay for us to trust the process. Because our best players now are not the most expensive players at the club. Our best players are the academy kids, our kids who bought years ago for cheap and groomed them into what they are. So why not trust that, you know, what, what has shown? And already we have a lot of young kids coming through from the academy who are promising. So for me, uh, my thinking is we need to uh, be, we need to be, it's a good, a good thing actually that there's not so much money to spend, to confuse us that we have so much money to go and spend on. On, on, on so many players. It's a good thing for us to come down and concentrate on working smart. Trust me, the only big money we need to spend is the number six. The rest of the players, for the wingers, Marcus Rashford, and you can ask me what happens then with the wingers, bring back Mason Greenwood or trust Ahmad Diallo. If you can't bring back Greenwood, if you don't, for whichever reason, we don't think we can bring back Greenwood for whichever selfish reasons, trust Ahmad Diallo. He's young. And he can be trusted to grow with this team because he has got the foundation of a star. He can be a proper star. So, yes, we might have just 100 million pounds to spend. It is not a concern for me at all. It's actually, for me, an opportunity for us to do the right business, work smartly, slowly, but surely. Spend the most part of it on the right player you need, the part that you're desperate in, because I will hate it if, we relied on Kobe and thought and, and think we, we will transform Kobe into a number six and then don't sign a proper number six. I think that would be unfair. 
it would be us putting a load on a player who can give us so much more if he's freed because a number six is restricted. Kobe needs to be freed. You need to free your best player to give you your best game, uh, to, 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 to play his best. So that, 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 that's for me uh, what I think. Uh, that for me is, uh, is what I think. I think we just have to work smart now that we have minimum uh, resources. People are thinking that Sajim would bring his pounds and dollars. Well, he can bring those to probably build the stadium, get partners around. But when it comes to business in terms of player on the pitch, in terms of footballers, in terms of what, uh, it's, not, it's not allowed. I think you can add in your pounds with the you know, buying facilities and what, but when it comes to players, transfer business, no, it's not allowed. You need to work within what you, you, you can manage. The club needs to be completely self-sustaining. Buy players from your profits. If you don't make profits, you can't buy players. If you need to buy players, if you don't, don't make a profit, you need to sell, sell to buy. And that's the situation we will be in. We need to be able to sell to buy as many as we want. Now, look at the list we have. Marcus Rashford will be sold, but I think his value is going down by the day. Down, down from 80 million that I was rating him at, probably now he's at 60 or 50 million, if you're lucky. Then Casemiro, because he's aging, Casemiro, I think, could get about 30 million or thereabouts for him, uh, or even less, 30 million for Casemiro. Then, because he's still contracted, I think Harry Maguire can stay. I think we cannot. We, we don't need to rush to sell Harry Maguire. Uh, we, we still need him. Uh, so he's off the hook. Then um, uh, Scott McTominay, maybe his value could have gone up maybe to 40 or 45 million now. Uh, but again, there could be confusion. People thinking, do we sell him or not? Uh, then Anthony, who will pay for Anthony? Who could pay really for Anthony? I feel like Anthony might, might be those players we, we send out on loan because he has, he has got a long contract and his valuation, uh, based on how, we, how much we bought him for, is so high. I don't think we can get reasonable money out of Anthony. Maybe the most would be 25 or there about 25, 30 million. There about, that would be the most big loss, but we don't care about the loss we made. We just now look at what we bring in to add on what we have. And then, and probably we are still paying for Anthony. Uh, then who else are we selling? The others are going. Some are leaving for free. Who else can, are we selling? You realize that there are not so many money, players bringing in money. Mason Mount might not be sold now. He's even injured. Really, how, who is going to buy this guy who is mostly injured? But also, he, perhaps he, he needs a bit of time for him to, to be judged properly. So, yeah, it's, uh, you realize that you might have about three or four players that can bring in a total of, together, that can bring in a total of tops 100 million. So, at the 100 that we have, 200 million, if we work smart, it's even better than the 100. But we need to plan within the 100 for now. This is the United Hotspot. My name is Webb. That is the transfer situation at Manchester United as we count down to the summer.